Hello friends, in this video, I'll teach you how to identify machine cycles for a given instruction. As I said in the last video, for every instruction, we got two parts that is opcode and operand. So let's try to figure it out. What is meant by opcode and what is meant by operand? So every instruction is made up of two parts here. One is called as opcode. The other one is what we called as operand. See, just to tell you, operand is simply either data or address. I repeat, operand is simply data or address which is specified in the instruction. And opcode is nothing but the type of operation that you want to perform. Every instruction have got opcode and size of opcode is always one byte. I repeat, size of opcode is always one byte, that is eight bit. So, size of opcode is always one byte. Whereas, size of operand is either one byte or two byte. Or sometimes, it is simply zero byte. I mean, there is no operand specified in the instruction. So, remember, every instruction has opcode, but every instruction may not have operand. Every instruction has opcode along with operand size as either one byte or two byte. And now based on this information, we can classify instruction into three types. That is one byte instruction, two byte instruction and three byte instruction. So now we will see classification of instruction that is one byte, two byte and three byte. So instructions are classified into one byte instruction. So one byte instruction are those instruction which has opcode without operand. You will find no instruction without opcode. Opcode is necessary. Without opcode, you cannot understand what operation to be carried out. So remember, opcode is what operation to be performed. Opcode is what operation to be performed and operand is on which to perform. So it is required that opcode must be given. So one byte instruction means it has got only opcode of one byte plus zero byte operand. Very simple. What is meant by two byte instruction? Two byte instruction is that instruction which has one byte opcode and one byte operand. Very simple. So two byte instruction means opcode will be one byte and one byte operand. What is meant by three byte instruction? I'm sure you must guess. Remember, opcode cannot be more than one byte. Opcode is always one byte. So, breakup of three byte instruction can be written as opcode one byte and two byte of operand. So, in a way, it is nothing but three byte instruction. But exactly what is meant by one byte instruction is that, see, we know that we write a program and program is nothing but set of instructions. We need to save the program in the memory only. So basically we are saving each and every instruction in the memory. So if we are saving that program or if we are saving instructions into memory, definitely it is taking some space of memory, am I right? Now I'm going to count that space of memory it is occupying. That space will be in terms of the number of memory location occupied by every instruction. That is, for example, if I say one byte instruction, it means that particular instruction must have taken only one memory location, is that right? to store itself into the memory or if if a particular instruction is taking two locations of memory to store itself it means it is two byte instruction if the instruction is three byte it means it is going to utilize three memory locations in a way one byte two byte and three byte instruction tells you how many memory locations every instruction is taking so i'm sure you must have understood what is meant by opcode and what is meant by operand now Let's see what are the steps to be followed for identifying the machine cycles for the given instruction. These are steps to be followed by or followed for identifying the machine cycles for an given instruction. Step number one. First of all, convert the instruction in terms of opcode and operand. I mean, separate opcode and operand. 
so write instruction in the form of opcode and operand and then write the same memory so it's a very simple step when i'll take example this step would be quite clearer to you because only looking at the step you won't understand what is need to be done so once you see the instruction you have to separate its opcode and operand and once you do that you have to store the same into the memory for example if you have one byte opcode and one byte operand it means in the memory you require two memory locations to store the information that is it is a two byte instruction suppose for a particular instruction you got only opcode and no operand then to store such instruction into the memory you require only one memory location or if it is three byte instruction then it will have one byte for opcode and two byte for operand so you require three memory locations to store that instruction into the memory so this is the clarity you should get what is opcode and what is operand and what is the size of operand because size of opcode is fixed it is always one byte step number 2 is called as a fetching phase in this phase mu p reads an instruction from memory it's very simple see first of all as a programmer we have stored our instructions into the memory now mu p comes in picture mu p reads these instructions from memory this is what we called as fetching phase remember fetching means reading phase so what happens in fetching phase mu p reads instructions from memory very simple and when it is reading the instruction from memory it reads opcode and operand so when it is reading the opcode this machine cycle is called as opcode fetch and when it is reading an operand it is called as operand fetch so only two machine cycles you will find in step number 2 that is opcode fetch and operand fetch only two machine cycles out of many machine cycles we have listed in the previous video you will see only two machine cycles involved here that is either opcode fetch along with either no operand fetch or only one operand fetch or two operand fetches depending upon the availability of the operand so only opcode fetch and operand fetch machine cycles you will always see in fetching phase so i would request you to write down these steps with you because in this video we are only going to see steps to be followed and actual examples we will be starting in the next video so it is better that if you have these steps with you then it would be better for you to refer them and to imply them on the examples so let's start with step number 3 in step number 3 execution phase begins so step number 3 is known as execution phase so of course after fetching mu p decodes and after decoding only execution phase begins but for decoding purpose we don't require machine cycles because it is whole internal operation done by mu p in execution phase now we have to decide in execution phase you have to decide whether mu p is performing some external operation i repeat in execution step you have to see whether mu p is performing some external operation so you have to identify whether mu p performs an external operation see this external operation involves read from the memory the reason why i am saying memory read as an external operation because memory is not internal part of mu p it is present externally to the mu p so when it is memory read this operation is definitely an external operation or it can be io read it can be io write it can be memory write also so you have to identify whether mu p is performing external operation and if yes try to identify how many such operations are required and accordingly you can write machine cycles so if yes then see how many machine cycles are required and which machine cycles will come over here that is memory read memory write 
I you read, I you write out of them. So machine cycles which will be involved here will be always memory read, memory write, or I O read or I O write. So only these machine cycles you will see. You will never ever see opcode fetch and operand fetch here because opcode fetch and operand fetch refers to reading the opcode and reading the operand which comes in fetching phase only where mu p is reading an instruction. Once it is read by mu p, then the decoding happens and after decoding this execution step has begun. So when it comes to execution, there is no question of reading opcode or operand. So there is no question of opcode fetch and operand fetch. So don't just mix it up. Yes, it might happen that we were identifying whether mu p is performing an external operation. Sometimes there are many instructions which does not do this external operations. In that case, you can skip step number three and no extra machine cycle is needed if mu p is not performing an uh, external operation. I repeat, if mu p is not performing any external operation, then you can skip step number three. No extra machine cycle is needed. Only fetching phase, that is opcode fetch and operand fetches are needed and we can just skip step number three and we can go ahead. As I said, when we will be starting with an example, then only these steps will make some sense. So I'll just write what I said here. So I'll read what I have written here. If there is no external operation involved in execution phase, skip step number three and no extra machine cycle is needed. So these are the steps to be followed for identifying the machine cycles for a given instruction. So now in the next video, we will see, we will take number of examples and I will be following the same steps. I'm sure you will have these steps written with you. So if you have these steps, then only you will understand what steps I'm following there while identifying the machine cycle for every instruction. Thank you.